Welcome to the Insomnia Project. Sit back, relax, and listen as we have a conversation about the mundane. One thing we can promise is that our conversation will be less than fascinating so that you can just feel free to drift off. Thank you for joining us. We hope you will listen and sleep. I'm your host, Marco Timpano. And I'm your co-host, Nidhi Kana. Marco, I actually gave a yawn during your <laughs> intro speech, it's, so it's clearly I'm listening and sleeping. Oh my goodness. I know. I wanted to ask you, when you shop, mm-hmm. let's say you go to a shopping mall. First of all, do you like shopping malls? No, I hate them. Oh, really? Yeah. So when you go to a shopping mall, where is the first place you, like, what is your strategy as someone who doesn't enjoy shopping malls? Well, if I'm going to a shopping mall, I'm going there for a specific purpose. Okay. So the strategy is get in, get out. Okay. Um, See, I meander. I could oh, go to, really? I could go to a shopping mall with no specific purpose and just... Meander around? Meander. Like I was in Walmart recently and I haven't been to a Walmart in a while. And I was like, oh, this is really interesting. And I just like get caught up in... in I think I was in the... Um, I w- it went from electronics to plants to... Ba- I was looking for batteries and then I got distracted like, you know, a kid. And I was like, oh, look at this interesting little bobble I was holding up. I was looking at... You know the pads you use on your ironing board? Mm-hmm. I totally got distracted by that. Really? Yeah, because they were like very thick and oh. plush. And I prefer an ironing board that has that thick layer. Yep. Because have you ever been to a hotel and had to iron a shirt in a hotel? And it's like a thin. And it has no padding. Yeah. And it's like, oh, that's the worst. Which reminds me I need to get an ironing board. An actual board or just the pad? An actual board. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But all that to say that uh, I am not that way. I okay. usually am going into a store for a purpose mm-hmm. and will go in, do what I need to do, get out. What I will actually meander to is probably the food court because okay. anything that involves sort of food court exploits is something that I think I've been conditioned maybe sure. to uh, – um, go there because I think as a kid when you go to the mall it's such an experience and I always associate that with like getting food with my friends sure. or hanging out and um, so I think that is something that I do is that it's really hard for me to go to a mall and not leave without a coffee or lunch or something fast foody. What about strip mall versus shopping mall? In what sense? Which do you prefer? I think strip mall. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah, I think strip mall because I don't know. You te- I don't know why actually. I, I feel like the the shopping mall is become this really elevated experience. Okay. You go in, the air conditioning in the summer just blasts you. Right. You go in, you know, everything is vast and big and to get from one end of the mo- – like now it's not just small malls, right? They're right. all mega Meg- malls. Sure. And so to get to the place that you need to go to, you usually have to go quite far. Right. Before you've even gotten through the doors, the parking – Is a situation. Is a situation in half. The only time I go to the mall where I am – where I semi-enjoy it is during actually the holidays because the credit card that I have um, – I love it. I know it. Allows me to – park like valet Mm -hmm. and get all this complimentary like access to this they have um uh uh, like a special kind of uh storefront that in the mall that they set up as like a lounge so you can go in there get like a snack get a coffee check your coat like that's a little bit more something that i would be sure sure I, I think I remember you lent me your card so yes. that I could take it, and it was a wonderful experience. Yes, that's right. So if you want that bougie experience, just borrow Nitty's card <laughs> around the holidays. Can we go back to ironing? Yeah. How? Where do you start when you're ironing a shirt? Uh, on the um, – okay, one of two places. Okay. Either the sleeves – that's where you start. Yeah. Okay. Either the sleeves or the big kind of middle area. Uh, I start with the back. So, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, you don't start. I start with the back. 
Mm. And then I do the front. Mm -hmm. And then I do the collar. Mm -hmm. And in between there, I'll do, you know, that little panel that is your shoulders. Yes. Somewhere in between there, I'll do that. Yeah. And I do my sleeves last. Okay. And then sometimes I go back and I iron the front. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. And I like a good iron. Do you have a good iron? I have a good iron, but I don't have the ironing board, Marco. So how do you how do you deal with that? Like what? How do you iron? It's a like on a towel. On a yeah, but on my table, like yeah. on a kitchen table. I've yeah. had to do that before. It's yeah, it's not the greatest system. And sometimes we were talking about hotels and how bad their ironing board is. Be very cautious, listeners. If you're using a hotel iron to make sure when you use the little spritzer, mm -hmm. I don't know what you'd call that, but you know the part that spritz water onto your clothes. Mm -hmm. Some places people haven't used that uh, iron in a while. And so there can be some calcification that happens inside. Yeah. And when you spray it onto your clothes, some of that calcification can hit your clothes. Ah. And it's just, I just, I hate, if, if I'm at a hotel and they don't have a good iron or an ironing board, because I'm often there for work, and I sure. like to freshly iron my clothes before I go to work. I'm really not a happy person. It's like uh, hotel tips with Marcos. Yeah, Juliano. <laughs> but I love to put on a freshly ironed shirt. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. Or even pants. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, what age do you get to where you can no longer wear crushed clothing? I don't know. I think that I think there's a time and place for everything. <laughs> so there's sometimes where crushed clothing or just... where it starts to bother you. Okay, I, I've noticed that it starts to bother me more. Where I'm like, oh, I can't wear this because it's crushed and I don't have time to iron it, and sure. I need to iron it, and yeah. I think people like that tend to buy more wrinkle-free mm. type clothing, wash and wear, whatever you call it. Mm -hmm. How important are coat hangers to you? Like you mean the aesthetic of coat hangers? I mean. In the ironing process, in your home, oh. do you have, like, for example, we have those coat hangers that have kind of a, they're very thin and flat, mm -hmm. and they have like a felty sort of material that's been adhered to it, so it has a sort of velvety feel to it, you know? Oh, I don't like those. They break so easily. Yeah. That's the biggest problem with those. I just go with like the thicker plastic ones that actually have the um, grooves in, so that when okay. you place your clothing on it, they, they, they kind of hold. Sure. Uh, and they don't slip off the hanger itself. Because mm -hmm. you know how there's some bigger hangers that are like thick plastic mm -hmm. hangers, but anything you put on there is just going to slide right off. In particular, certain shirts yes. I, that are um, not cotton, but a little – sorry, I'm, I'm making motions with my hands to try to describe it. Silky. Uh, silkier things, yeah. right? D need that little bit of uh, – Grip. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like a metal coat hanger. Like a, a metal uh, yeah. hanger for me is one of the best yeah, things because good standard, it's like sturdy. They take up no room. They do their purpose. They're not fancy, but if they fall, if you step on them, they're oh, not going to break. Do you mean like a metal hanger, like what you get from the dry cleaners? Yeah, I'm cool with that. What? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Some of the other ones, like some wood wood hangers, yeah. they're awesome looking and they're. You know, they hold – they can hold a lot of heaviness sure. to it. But they take up too much room. Okay. They're bulky and they don't I necessarily... just find metal hangers – you can't really place that much on them. They, they're so weak. But they're strong in other places. Like, for example, if you step on a metal coat hanger – you're going to hurt your foot. Nothing's going to happen to that thing. I mean, how many times are you stepping on hangers? Trust me. The, in, in my house, for some reason, my <laughs> wife likes to take clothes – now I'm just ratting her out. She'll put them on the bed and decide what she's wearing. Sure. And then she'll take something on and put it off and then leave it on the bed. And then the coat hanger will fall on the floor. And then I will or she will step on it. And mm. these velvety ones, the hook part will snap and break. And so then you've got a broken hanger. And it's like it's... what happens is it's fine if one, one or two happen. But when several happen. Right. Then you're low on coat hangers. Yeah. Or not coat. I should say hangers because they're not necessarily for, for coats. coats. Like, do you, have, do you have enough hangers for your clothes? I mean, never. It's always something that, you know, depends on where I am on a laundry cycle. Um, right. Because but I want to live in a house where I have enough hangers for my yeah. clothes. And I would accept 
my wife steals a lot of the hangers, and so I'm left hangerless. See, I look at it another way. Okay. If I don't have enough hangers, it means I need to purge myself some of some of the clothes. Fair. Which is what brings the clothes to the clothing swaps. Right. That we have. That you have with my wife. Yes. Yes. <laughs> You're right, not we, yeah. but, but that I have with your wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I find it like, okay, do I really need this item? And is that why I don't have a clothing, uh, a hanger for it? Right. And so it just makes me think a little bit. Okay, that's, that's fair. All. That's all. That's fair. It's kind of like musical chairs. <laughs> Where you're like one in, one out? Yeah. So if you if you are purchasing or getting a, uh, an item of clothing from a clothes swap, let's say, you will then make sure that one leaves the leaves your home. At least one, yeah. Okay. Or as soon as I come back from a clothing swap, I immediately purge my closet for the next clothing swap. Okay. So that – because for two reasons. One, because I need to make room for the new clothes. But also if I – put it in the clothing swap bag and I don't use it for a few months, it means that I wasn't really missing it. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. So then I know it's really ready for the clothing swap. What about laundry hampers? Oh, yeah. Like, do you have, like, so for example, you've worn a shirt all day and you want to, you know, it's going to go to the wash. Where does that shirt go in your home? In my hamper. In a hamper. Yeah. Okay. Do you like your current hamper? I do. It's like I've had it for a really long time. It's like a wicker, baskety okay. type of sturdy, yeah, sturdy, but but where attractive. else do you put it other than in the hamper? Some people might bring it right to their laundry area and throw it in their I don't know what, but yeah, I guess you'd need a. Some people pile it up on a on a specific chair. Okay, I don't know. Enough. We have a hamper, but I don't love it. Okay, and it drives me nuts. Why don't you love it? <sighs> Nitty. <laughs> you know me. I'm very particular, right? So, In all the right ways. Okay. Thank you. So I like the proper hamper for the space that we hamp our clothing. I don't know if that's the term that you use, but that's what I'm going to call it. Great. And we had a beautiful hamper that fit in this spot. And then the hamper got destroyed. Overuse. It wasn't a very expensive hamper. What kind of hamper was it? Was it like one with, you know how you have the ones with like the plastic ones with all the holes in them? Okay, so I'm talking oh, – so are you talking about the hampers that you carry down? Yeah. No, I'm talking about a hamper for the clothes before they come down to your laundry okay. area. So like a big barrel-type yep. hamper. That's the hamper that I have. Okay, so – and then what do you call those ones that are baskets? Hamper baskets or like a clothes basket? I don't know. You know laundry one, basket? Laundry basket. That's where I thought you were going. Okay. So our hamper was one of these – you know when you get from the dollar store, collapsible, and they spring open and they have a metal – it's like kind of meshy mm-hmm. and just a metal oval that holds it for, on four sides. Very basic. Nothing attractive about it. Very functional. Sure. But it was the perfect size for that area of our closet. It just tucked into this little corner and mm. stayed. The problem with something like that that you get at a dollar store or, you know, that isn't meant for craziness, which it experienced with all our clothes. And then I would bring it down. Sometimes I would bring that down and it just – it lived its life and then it was like, I'm done. Yeah, right. And I haven't been able to find a hamper like that since. Mm. So Amanda bought this hamper that's too big for the area and it's just like a – sturdy bag type <laughs> hamper. I just can't get it right on the no, laundry I, I, like, <laughs> department. And that is one area where I, I enjoy. I enjoy washing clothes. I enjoy separating clothes. I enjoy huh. using all the liquid detergents yeah. and, and whatnot. And even when you iron, do you ever use um, Spray? starch? Oh, no, I don't. Okay. So I was a starcher and I love a starch collar. I love a starch oh, shirt. Yeah. But the problem with the starch that I would have, and maybe our listeners can direct me in the right in the right areas, I would use a spray starch. So I would starch my collar. Okay. But some of that spray would end up on the floor. Oh. Which would make the floor very slippery. Huh. Depending where I iron. What does starch do actually? It makes it stiff. So okay. it gives you a stiff, strong collar. Sure. And I know that there's like a starch I think there's a starch kind of um crayon. Oh. Like a big, like kind of like waxy thing that you can 
I've never used that. Okay. But I do want to recommend something. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Speaking of laundry, have you ever heard of Nelly? It's like a brand of like, um, um, I want to say, environmental laundry stuff. Sure. They have a stick. It's like a wax stick for taking out stains. And it is great. It is so great, Nitty, that if I had an extra one, I would give one to you because, hmm. you know, I'm the person who, Amanda will be like, I stained this with something. I'm like, oh, this is like nine days later if you brought me this. I should have got this as soon as you stained it. I could have <laughs> dealt with it, right? So I've had to deal with our stains and this stick works fantastically. Really? I also want to say, here's a tip. If you have an oil stain on your clothes, let's say olive oil or whatever oil, whatever oil the best thing to get the oil out is shampoo for oily hair. Oh. Yeah. And I got that tip from our friend Dale. Marco yeah. with the tip. Marco Timpano's tips are coming. I feel like all Eloise or whoever. Yes, seriously. <laughs> or one Life of those. hacks with Marco. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's my. And what's funny is Nitty started with a yawn and I could see her fading out at one I'm, point when, yeah. when I was <laughs> talking. Yeah. We stuck him at the start. <laughs> Well, that's the purpose of this conversation is I to, know, I mean, but, there you uh, go. yeah, but I love it's that. It's also very hot in this room, I know. which is why. Yeah, it doesn't, it, it, <laughs> a warm room can really put you to sleep. I love putting on warm, fresh laundry too. Have you ever done oh. that right from the dryer, put something on? So it's funny you say that because anytime I have fresh laundry from the dryer, um, the only thing that Zena wants to do is climb on top of it and fall asleep. She knows. She knows. Yes, that's a, there's nothing like getting in a bed Ugh. with fresh sheets. I know. That... It's her dream. Do you iron your sheets? No. I don't. I love iron I sheets. I feel like there was a look of judgment no, right there. No, so not. Because I don't I, – I also don't iron my sheets. <laughs> but if you're staying at my place, I will make sure that the sheets, the sheets on, are your, ironed? Are on your bed are ironed. Aww, yeah. But I should iron my sheets because I really like – do you? It's just there, it's just so much to iron though, Nitty. To it iron is, it's sheets, a lot of like, like fabric. I give I give a sh I give a sh props to anybody who has the time and the desire to iron sheets because it's a pain. I mean, I also kind of see it as a little bit useless. You're not wrong, but there's something beautiful <laughs> about because that's why ho ironed. hotel yeah, hotel yeah. sheets when they're ironed in a fancy place they looks just so nice on the sure. bed. You know. Sure. But they have industrial irons to do that. Oh right? yeah, and it's like a different. Yeah, it probably goes through a. They have like these big, system. big yeah. presses and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If I had that, maybe I would iron my sheets. But would you? It, no. Like, if you had that, it's not a priority no. in terms of the priority, the chore list priority. Mm -hmm. Ironing sheets, no. Let's say you had a live-in butler. Okay. Would you want that butler to iron your sheets and make sure you have freshly ironed sheets, or? Tend to your garden. Tend to the garden. Really? Yeah. So you don't love gardening? It's not that I don't love gardening. It's that uh, sometimes I don't have time for it, and I have a garden, and I feel like I'm neglecting these plants. And really? I don't want to have them die. Right. What so. plant right now is getting less of your love? Oh, there's this one little uh, cherry tomato plant that... <laughs> I finally went to the dollar store and got, like, the stand so that it could grow up. But in right. order for me to put the stand on, I had to, like, break some of the branch. Like, it was just not a good scene last night. It was a little bit of, cher like, cherry tomato murder. I Like, it, it wasn't a good scene. So that one, but also because um, it's been a very rainy summer, so right. I haven't had to, like, water um, as much as I usually do. But this one plant, the one that I had to buy the little stand for um, – it's at a place where even when it rains, it doesn't get as much water as the rest of the oh. plants. And so I just need to move it. To wow. So you're really like torturing this, this uh, yeah, poor this little poor plant. How are your other plants doing? Great. Like what's doing well? Well, dill is a weed, let right. me tell you. Okay. Um, and so now I, I think I've, it's a little bit overgrown. Um, fennel is doing really well. Mm -hmm. Oregano is doing really well. All the herbs are doing well. Um, I just picked the first pepper from one uh, of our plants. What kind of pepper? Is it like a bell pepper, which I hate, or is it more like of a hot pepper, which I know you like? So bell pepper, but I noticed today mm -hmm. that the hot peppers are coming in. Okay. So I have some plants of hot peppers. What Can I just take a little yeah. tangent? 
Nitty, I have a lot of respect for you. <laughs> I particularly have a lot of respect when it comes to hot sauces. Oh, yeah. What is important? What are the three key areas in a hot sauce that's important to you, ranking from one to three? Because when we go to a restaurant, Nitty's always like, can I get some hot sauce? And God forbid they should say, oh, it's really hot. And Nitty's like, Nitty will taste it. And she's like, it's not really hot. Like, <laughs> like, like you'll judge. You know yeah. how they have the Scoville scale for, <laughs> for peppers? They should have the Nitty scale for hot it's sauce. Like, okay, a okay. good hot sauce. A hot sauce, like if it's homemade, I'm on board. Okay. Um, scotch bonnet's going to be really good. Like anything with Thai chilies is going to be good. Um, hot sauces I don't like. Yes. Don't say – when I say I want hot sauce and you bring me Frank's, we're not on the same page. When I say I like hot sauce and you bring me like the uh, – you know, the Chinese kind of uh, – you get at the Chinese restaurants. Uh, the, little, the, yeah, yeah, the sriracha? No, not sriracha. The, the little packets? No. Well, the packets are not even a question. Marco. It's in the jar. It's kind of like a red pepper, but it's not actually hot sauce. Like, it's okay. just a little bit different. Okay. Um, it's a little tangier. It's not as hot. Um, you know, Mexican hot sauces are really good mm-hmm. if they're done right. Um, I mean, you know, uh, uh, anything like, again, anything with scotch bonnet is amazing. Uh, what about if someone. With green chili. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What if someone brings you Tabasco as the hot sauce? No, or <laughs> don't. Why would you even bring that to me? <laughs> like, it's not even. I laugh because I've been in situations where that happens and the look on Nitty's face. <laughs> I just remember when I was living in Italy and I was living in uh, Milan and I would always ask for hot sauce. I think we've talked about this before. I'm sure. I've asked, I asked for like, you know, hot peppers mm-hmm. like you get at a good southern Italian restaurant, right. you know, like the – and they would – Bring me black pepper. And I was really confused because I'm like, I'm in Italy. Why can't they like <laughs> bring on the heat? Bring on the heat. Um, but it's not a northern Italy Italian right. thing. The, but the the black pepper was their hot <laughs> it pepper. It was their hot pepper. And I was like, okay, this is not this is not gonna work. Would you bring this episode is taking this turn of like Let's see how snobby Nitty is with her Very butler, snobby. with her husband. I'm the most snobby. Remember, didn't we do the posh episode? Yes. <laughs> the, bougie the bougie It's one of our most popular <laughs> episodes, so we revisited in this one. But uh, would you ever bring hot sauce to a restaurant? I know yeah, people I've who done do that. that before. You have, I eh? Have. So what's your hot sauce that you bring? Well, I had a friend who went to uh, actually Mexico and brought me back like a um, – a small sized hot sauce that you could put in your purse. Like it was very small. Oh, okay. And so she brought it in particularly so I could take it to restaurants. So I brought that around a couple of times. Um, I don't have it anymore. Right. Uh, but it was, just, I, I can't find it here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. ha- have you ever made your own hot sauce? No, because if I'm putting chili on something, I'm usually putting like raw green chilies on things oh, okay. or red chilies or something. I see. Um, so or you- sir- like I, I do have sriracha. I That's will. not my favorite. Really? Yeah. Amanda loves sriracha. Yeah, I it's can do. F- like it's, yeah, yeah. Or I'm putting um, ground red chili, mm-hmm. like the Indian ground red chili that they have. So That's great. Yeah. That's great. I love these little tips. I yeah. love these. I, I just love, I love your knowledge of hot, hot sauces sauce? too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know it is quite the skill. Well, you know, it's, it's fascinating because, you know, I've been with people who like, Mayo or ketchup is their their thing, mm-hmm. and it has to be on the table. Or um, brown sauces and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's value in all that too. But uh, what's your sauce of uh, choice? Hmm. What's my sauce of like choice? The, the the sauce that you feel like maybe it's not something you have to have each time, but like you feel like it's missing when it's not there. I love a good hollandaise sauce. Oh, okay. I do like good yeah. hollandaise or bernay sauce. I know ah. that sounds so like. One second, but like my my eggs with a hollandaise sauce on it, if it's Who's good, sauce, I know it's it's a little it's a little much. But um, I I don't I'm not one for I'm not so like I need saucy things. I do like a burger that has a lot of different sauces yeah, on it. So if you're going to give me a burger, you can keep the lettuce, you can keep the tomato, but give me barbecue, mayo, um, relish, uh, mustard, ketchup, different types of ketchup. What kind of mustard? I'm good with all mustards. Oh, really? Yeah, but what's I, your, like, mustard of choice? Dijon, honey Dijon, regular French. Yeah, I like them. Okay, so I like 
the mustards for different reasons. So, okay. like, depending if I'm having pork, a honey mustard sure. I love. Uh, I do like a gritty D- Dijon. Mm. Um, but I can deal with a yellow mustard, too. I'm really not... I guess if I was to if I had those three options, I would go with the Dijon that has the little the little uh, seeds Greens. in it. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 where I lie with them. Dijon is a yeah. good Dijon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, Canada makes. Uh, I think I think Saskatchewan is one of the places that produces a lot of mustard. Really. I think Dijon actually imports a lot of mustard seed from Canada. Huh. I remember reading that one once. I could be wrong. People in Dijon <laughs> are probably like raising their fists at me right now. But mm-hmm. uh, Well, yeah. No, I, I like a good Dijon mustard, too. Mm-hmm. What Just about the yellow, you know, standard? Not that, my favorite, yeah. no. I'd rather have something a little bit more snobby. But on a hot dog, the yellow mustard is fantastic. I still want my Dijon. Okay, well, listen, I won't keep that from you. (laughs) But uh, speaking of wants, I'm afraid we've come to the end of this episode. So I hope you got your ironing fixation. (laughs) Your hot sauce fixation. Yeah, all all settled here. Yeah. Um, Well, as always, we really appreciate you listening. And uh, you can always rate us or uh, write a review on iTunes or... Um, any of the other platforms that we are on. I think we're on Spotify, too, now. We are on Spotify. Um, So please do find us. uh, Feel free to let us know your thoughts on how we're doing. And uh, as always, we hope that you listen and sleep.